I am so excited to be joined here with Michael Prabhu, head of product growth at Sync Fusion. And we were just talking about your origin story at Sync Fusion. Yeah. It's so exciting, starting in the code, and you're still knee deep in the code because we got a demo today. Yeah, exactly. So uh, today I'm going to show uh, how to create a custom GPT. Okay. So, uh, you know, there are a lot of other SDKs out there for OpenAI. But what I'm going to show now is uh, how you can create these custom GPTs on your own okay. uh, without any SDKs so that it will be easy for you. And uh, I'm going to build first with Blazor Server App, okay. and then I'm going to show you how this Blazor Server App can be uh, you know, deployed into uh, the Dotted Maui hybrid app, so that uh, you, know, uh, you can get the best of both worlds. You, know, you can have the web app, and as well as Android, iOS, Mac as well. Yeah. You said the right words. I love the best of both worlds. So we're going to dive into the demo. Yeah. I'm not super familiar with Blazor, but I know some of our audience are probably experts. I'll yeah. pepper in a few questions while we go through it, just to give context on Syncfusion and its benefits. But like, let's jump in. I don't want to hold you up. Yeah, sure. So Syncfusion provides uh, third-party UI components. So I, I have developed, uh, let me show you a demo of that first. Yeah. So here it is. So there you go. Uh -huh. So here's the chat component that I've created. So right now, uh, I'll just call the APIs. Uh, you know, I'm just going to tell something like that. Um, tell me a joke. So it is going to tell you a joke. OK. OK. So it's, it's just like that. Okay. <laughs> so the thing is, uh, uh, I have created this entire application using Syncfusion UI components. And uh, let me show you that. So this is, a, this is a Blazor server application that I have. Okay. And inside that, I have these pages. Uh, in the, inside, I have this index.razor. So let me show you what I have created. So here it is. So what I have used is a Syncfusion list view. Uh -huh. uh, in this list view, I have created a template where I can show the chatbot as one user and the uh, other one who is asking the question as another user. Okay. So that this template can be uh, you know, manipulated accordingly. So here, uh, so in order to do that, uh, we have to create a chat GPT service first. So let me show you how that can be done. So here, I have created a chat GPT service. So here, what I have done is uh, you have to have your own API key. Mm -hmm. So I'm using Visual Studio Secrets so that uh, you know, Microsoft promotes that, and I, uh, I accordingly do that. Okay? So I have uh, my OpenAI key uh, set as secrets, and I have to choose the OpenAI model. So here, I have used uh, GPT 3.5 Turbo Instruct. Okay. And then you should choose an API endpoint. So the API endpoint is what uh, you, uh, you will request a question, and then you will get an answer. Yep. So here I'm going to use a, a, a API endpoint called completions. Okay. So let me, uh, let me show you what that is. So first, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a authentication here. So I'm passing, that, uh, passing this authentication with a prompt. So any question that, is pro uh, that, any question that uh, user asks is a prompt. And I'm, then I'm serializing that as a JSON, uh, as a JSON uh, format. And then I'm passing that to the endpoint. So once I get the answer, I reveal that answer in the chatbot text box. OK, so this is how it is. So uh, this, is, uh, this is the demo that I have shown before. So let me sh show you once again. Yeah. So, so the thing is here, let me give you a simple example here. So, so let me ask, uh, what is the weather in Seattle in, uh, in May? So now it is going to give me uh, what it looks like in May, right? Yeah. Uh, but if I'm going to ask, uh, how about August? The GPT doesn't understand the context of it because it is going to give you a generic answer like uh, the August is good. Yep. So if you want to pass on the context, you have to provide a different endpoint. You have to ask questions to a different endpoint. So the different endpoint that I'm uh, going to use here is chat completions. Okay. So here, before I have used uh, the uh, V1 completion, now I'm going to use chat completion. Okay. So in order to do that, you have to provide uh, the queries in a list of messages that you could do. So what you have to do is here, I'm, uh, once again, I'm going to uh, here. So now I'm going to pass on a message. I have to uh, give the role. So the, here, the role is a system. So the system is nothing but the AI. And if the user is asking any question, then the role has to be user. OK. okay. Yep. So that makes sense, right? So now let me quickly uh, show you that. So 
So I'm just going to um, come out of this. Mm -hmm. And uh, so once again, I have to do certain things here as well. Mm -hmm. Just give me a second. Uh-huh. And so there you go. Yep, now that makes sense. Yeah. So now let's run this. Now we are giving context to the uh, chatbot. So now what I have provided is uh, I have provided my name and I have provided certain things about Syncfusion. So now it uh, it understands about Syncfusion as well. So let me uh, show you that. So I think it probably yeah. It calls my name. Oh, there you go. Okay. So, so now, if I'm going to uh, ask the same question, like, uh, what is the weather in Seattle in May? So it is going Hello. to give me the answer for May. And now, if I ask, how about August? And now it understands the context and it provides the exact answer. Woo! Yeah. I love a good demo. <laughs> That was great, okay. And that also looked very straightforward. Yeah, exactly. So what are the implications of this and having it so accessible to developers? Yeah, I think uh, um, I, um, the thing is the whole repository is available in my GitHub repository. So you can uh, visit here. So you can uh, go to, uh, you can scan it and go to this repository and uh, give it a try, you know? Awesome. So let's move on to the uh, next part of the demo. Cool. Yeah, so the, qu the thing is, um, let me show you this. So what I'm going to create is I'm going to create a custom GPT, right? So in order to do that, you have to create an assistant. You yes. have to create an assistant, and then you have to uh, provide, vec uh, you have to create a vector store, and uh, you have to upload a file regarding uh, your organization. Let's say, for example, you are creating something for your organization. Yep. Then you can upload a file, uh, the information that uh, about your organization. Uh, and then you can upload that file and relate that file to the vector store. Yes. So you have to link that file to the vector store. And at the same time, you have to link the vector store file to the assistant as well. Yeah. So now let's see how we could do that. So now you can see there are no assistant here. And in the storage, you don't have any files or you don't have any vector stores here. So now let me show you how that can be done. So now let me comment out this. And uh, so. So yeah. now, now I'm going to show how we can do that. So in order to do that, as I said, you have to follow the same procedure. So you have to, uh, you know, call on the API endpoint, uh, and you have different endpoints for different API uh, requests. So here, let me show you. So here I have provided the default uh, OpenAI key and what are the things that I'm going to use. Yep. And now I will create it, create an assistant, and then I will create a vector store, and then I will upload the file. And then that file is added to the vector store. And then that uh, vector store is updated to the assistant. And then we have to create a thread. And then we have to run the thread to get the messages. So now uh, let me uh, quickly uh, run this to show you what it is. So now um, I have added uh, the uh, signals as well. So I have oh. created an assistant, I have created a thread. Now it is waiting for the assistant to reply. So now we got a message. So that will, um, yeah, so here you go. So now this bot is specifically designed to answer questions only about Syncfusion. That is so cool. I don't want to hold you up because we are limited on time, but I'm interested in knowing who benefits from things like this. So the thing is, uh, any, de any developer who wants to create their own GPT for their own organization, uh, they can develop this on their own. Okay. So if let's say, for example, if they don't have a, a, a big LLM or uh, if they don't have a big uh, de database, they can use their file and they can use their file search for this. So it is really helpful for them. And uh, let me quickly, uh, so now, um, so we also have a product called Bold Sign, uh, which is with Syncfusion. So if I'm going to ask about that, then it will definitely give me that answer. So let's say, for example, uh, what are the three features you like in bold sign? 
So uh, the thing is, I have uploaded exactly what are the informations that the GPT has to answer. So now it is still uh, running the thread. Yeah. And there you go. You can see the answers like uh, the Bolson has easy integration, templated management, and comprehensive dashboard and everything. I love it. And it's so cool. Yeah. And the other thing is, let's say, for example, uh, if somebody is uh, misusing us, let's say, for example, what is 2 plus 2? So the thing is, it is specifically designed for Syncfusion, right? Uh -huh. It should not answer such questions. So the thing is, uh, I have restricted my uh, uh, custom GPT to answer only for Syncfusion. So here you go. So it is uh, saying, while it can assist for anything, but please make your questions related to Syncfusion itself. So this is, uh, this is the part of uh, what I have developed in Blazor. Yeah, so, awesome demo. This is so cool. Thank you. So now, um, as I promised, I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, create a Blazor hybrid app uh -huh. uh, showcasing all the same. Just so, in a couple of steps. Yeah, right? exactly. Very quickly, so, cool. So let me uh, set this as a startup project. Yeah, here you go. So the thing is, it is the same Blazor application that has been set up here, and nothing has changed. I have, I have not changed any code or anything here. So now the entire web application is rendered in dotted MAUI as a web view. So, uh, so here I'm going to run this in Windows machine. So before we, what we saw was a web application. Now what I'm going to show you is a Windows machine application. So here you go. So the live demo always takes time, right? <laughs> No, it's moving. Yeah, it's gone. So there you go. As I said before, uh, we have the entire web view here. So the, the same code, it is generating the same answers and everything. So, but now this is a Windows application. Rock on. That's awesome. So there you go. And uh, the, one more thing is, let me show you the demo in Android as well. So quickly, uh, I will uh, quickly show the demo in Android as well. Uh huh. So the thing is, uh, if you are creating an Android, uh, you have to be more specific about the environment that you choose. Yeah. So let's say, for example, uh, there are certain code that you need to uh, you know, add for Android. Uh, let me show you that. So let me show you the issue first, and then let me give you the answer. Yeah. Yeah. So once again, this is a web view, so you can see the result here. So once I'm clicking here, so the same thing, so you can see all these things. Yeah. So now, if I want to uh, ask a question, what will happen is that when I click on this text box, that text box will disappear because the keyboard is overtaking it, right? Yes. So in order to avoid that, uh, all you have to do is, so, so all you have to do is um, go to the app.xaml.file and uh, so all you have to give is, you have to say which platform you are choosing. Right. So platform configuration is Android. Right. And then you have to tell uh, the use soft input method. So if you are using the Windows soft input mode, then uh, you know it will automatically adjust the keyboard uh, uh, to your text box. So let me quickly show you the demo of that as well. And while it's running, you did tell us what a, what's beneficial for an agent. But tell us a little bit more, what exactly is an agent? So the agent is nothing but uh, you have to specifically provide a prompt in such a way that agent is uh, customized specifically for your use case. Yes. Uh, because uh, the, custom, uh, the GPT can pr provide answer for anything. Yeah. But if you, are if you are having an assistant or an agent, then that is specifically works for you. So you have to provide a prompt that uh, you, know, you have to uh, answer only these specific questions or anything like that. So now, as I said, um, here you go. So now you can see the text box has moved up. So the text box has moved up, and it is not. So it's fun, right? And you're sharing this code with our viewers. This yeah, is exactly. so cool. Yeah. As someone who's not familiar with Blazor or .NET Maui, this is very, very cool for me. And now I'm also integrated in how Sync Fusion does it. Yeah. So this is so great. Uh, did you have anything else for us before we go? Yeah, I think uh, uh, this is pretty much what I have prepared for today. No, this was plenty. It was so much. I think we really dived deep into getting a working application on multiple devices. And I'm, I learned a little bit about agents in Blazor and Maui today. Yeah, okay. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you, Don. Thank you. Always for fun. It. Thank you, guys.